From mysterious shadows to unexplained apparitions, these photographs and stories have left many questioning the boundary between the earthly and the otherworldly. In today's video, we take a look at some of the most haunted churches in the world. Anyone ever seen some spooky stuff while in church before? Share your experiences down in the comments. I'm your host, James, and these are the top 10 disturbing photos taken in churches haunted by the devil. And we're starting things off at number 10 with the red ghost. Now, this is actually a piece of footage, not a photo, but like I always say, footage is typically more entertaining anyway. This clip was sent to the YouTube channel Vault of Fear, who shared it online. The name of the church isn't given, nor is the location, but we see the camera person filming the church. Now, they either have terrible cinematography skills, or they're just kind of nervous because they saw something before they started filming. I'm not sure which. They eventually rest on the church altar, though, where we clearly see a semi-translucent lucent red figure walk from left to right. It then seems to crouch down before completely vanishing. This could definitely be a hoax, but if it isn't, and this is just what the person captured in camera, it's pretty incredible. Definitely not a trick of the light or anything. That looks like a figure walking across the floor. What do you all think though? Hoax? Genuine? Share your thoughts down below and leave your comments down below even if you don't have any thoughts on this and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Nothing to lose. Number nine, spooky figures. Back in 2017, 35 year old Leah Harrison visiting Lincoln Cathedral captured something strange in a picture she snapped. She described the figure as looking like the ghostly figures of a woman and a boy, possibly the ghosts of a mother and son. It's kind of hard to make out these figures. They could definitely just be smudges or pixel from the camera, but what adds to the credibility possible ghosts caught on camera here is that this church is said to be haunted. With it being constructed all the way back in 1072, the place certainly has a lot of history, so if these mysterious figures are indeed ghosts, then who could they be? Well, there's an interesting tale surrounding this church, and it all started in 1349 during the bubonic plague. As the Black Death swept over the town of Lincoln, the bodies began piling up, and the church, being overrun with corpses, eventually piled a bunch of them in a mass grave next to the cathedral. The spirits of those buried without proper ceremony or blessing are said to haunt the grounds, rising on the anniversary of their burial, forever trapped between heaven and hell. Sticking with Lincoln Cathedral for a moment, let's talk about the haunted well pictured here. This well is associated with an urban legend surrounding the devil. Now, the well definitely has an old allure about it, being constructed nearly a thousand years ago, but there's nothing immediately unsettling about it at first glance. But legend has it, if you walk around the well seven times and stick your finger into one of the holes in the door, the devil himself will cast judgment on you. If you're deemed a good person, you'll simply feel his breath on your finger, but if he deems you a real miserable piece of crap, you'll chomp your finger clean off. What constitutes bad or good to Satan? That's hard to say. Uh, I think it's safe to assume though that sticking your finger into strange holes is probably not the best idea without knowing exactly what's going on in there. Next we have St. Mary's Church in Ackenham. St. Mary's Church is rumored to be haunted by the devil. According to local legends, the devil is believed to rest beneath the church, specifically beneath a broken tombstone known as the Devil's Grave. The church, situated in the small village of Ackenham, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, has gained a reputation for supernatural occurrences over the years. The tale goes that the devil himself is said to have chosen this location as his resting place. The focal point of this belief is a particular tombstone within the churchyard, colloquially referred to as the Devil's Grave. Grave. And legend goes that disturbing the devil's grave could cause the Lord of Darkness himself to rise, inviting malevolent forces into the world. At number six, we have another St. Mary's Church, this one in Clop Hill. Uh, if I were to conjure up an image in my mind of a haunted church, it'd probably look exactly like this. This 14th century chapel fell into disuse in 1848, and over the years, it's gained a reputation for being a haunted site with possible satanic activity. During the 60s, evidence of disturbing activities surfaced when the church and its grounds were investigated. The walls of the chapel were found covered in graffiti with occult symbols and ritualistic markings on it. Graves in the churchyard had been disturbed, pointing to possible 
disturbing activities taking place on the grounds. There are also urban legends associated with this place too. One legend goes that the church is haunted by the devil, mostly because of the orientation of the church altar. And traditionally, Christian churches are constructed to face the eastern direction, symbolizing the direction of the heavens and the anticipated coming of the Messiah. But in the case of St. Mary's Church, the altar faces the southern direction. Number five, St. Nicholas's Church in Pluckley. If that's not an English sounding name, I don't know what is. Pluckley. Look at this spooky image here. I don't think it gets any more classically gothic horror than that either. St. Nicholas's Church in Pluckley, as well as the town itself, is said to be very, very haunted. The church, dating back several centuries, has become known for its paranormal activity. Legend goes that the churchyard is haunted by various spirits. Visitors claim to have witnessed apparitions and strange occurrences in and around the church. Haunted occurrences range from ghostly figures to unexplained sounds. One of the most well-known spirits said to haunt the grounds is known as the Red Lady, who roams the church grounds at night in search of her stillborn child. Pluckley as a town has also earned quite the reputation, said to be the most haunted village in Britain. The village's population to ghost ratio is uh, very uh, out of whack. It's a small place but it has 12 known ghosts roaming around it. And at number four, we have Rouse Church. This is a 12th century sandstone church in the Czech Republic. It's adorned with a peculiar feature above its main entrance, a small stone face believed to depict the devil. The legend surrounding this traces back to the church's construction and involves a local troll. According to the lore, during the church's initial construction, a troublesome troll, one of those in the comments that keeps uh, asking about people's hair, I wonder if this is him. Anyway, this troll, angered by the sound of church bells, consistently disrupted the building process by moving materials across a stream every night. Frustrated builders eventually abandoned the site altogether, choosing to build the church in its current location nearby. Still discontented, the troll decided to relocate 26 miles northwest to Kullaberg. There, the troll expressed a desire to return home, but claimed he was hindered by what he called the Jingling Grey Mare, a reference to the church and its chiming bells, which he was too afraid to name directly. The church's distinctive stone head above the entrance is linked to this legend. There are three Three main theories about its origin. One goes that it represents Ra the giant, credited with the church's construction, another associating with Roland, a medieval Christian knight, and the most prominent belief is that it portrays the devil. The idea here is that the devil's face is seen as a protective measure against trolls and malevolent beings. And at number three, the Spectre of Newby Church. This image here is very famous, taken in 1963 by Reverend Kenneth F. Lord in the Church of Christ the Consoler, found on the grounds of Newby Hall in North Yorkshire. Reverend Lord had been photographing the church. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, but once he developed the pictures, he discovered a mysterious semi-translucent cloaked figure standing at the church altar. Reverend Lord claimed to be alone in the church at the time of taking the photo. The figure in the image looks a lot like a plague doctor or some malevolent type of spirit. It definitely doesn't look friendly, but skeptics quickly dismissed the photograph as a hoax saying it was probably just double exposure or something. So Reverend Lord sent the photograph to experts to be examined, and according to their findings at the time, the photo showed no signs of tampering. Apparently, at least according to them, the image was genuine. And at number two, we have Chernobyl Church. Pretty much any photo taken in Chernobyl is gonna be eerie, given the context that it's the site of one of the worst nuclear disasters in history, but the abandoned church has to be one of the creepiest abandoned sites. That and the abandoned uh, school probably takes second place. The church is beautiful, but looking at these images, it's hard not to have this strange feeling about it. Human beings are just designed to be a little uncomfortable in big, empty places where there should be people. Falls into that liminal spaces realm of horror. Plus, the church is in the middle, again, of Chernobyl, so apart from the harmful air, you have mutated animals and, and God knows what else lurking around. Imagine having to spend a whole night alone in this place with nothing but a sleeping bag and a flashlight. Would you do that for like 500 bucks? I'd consider it. If anyone wants to offer me like an e-transfer for 500 bucks to like stay in one of these haunted places, I 
might consider it. That could be fun to film. Finally though, we have St. George's Church in Czech Republic. This is what this abandoned church looks like now. Built in the 14th century, this gothic marvel faced abandonment in the 1960s because of structural concerns. People had already thought the place was haunted, but then the roof like literally like caved in on the place during mass one day, which certainly didn't make people feel any less uneasy about going into the place. Over the years, the church was broken into, vandalized, and robbed. Believing the place was culturally significant, artist Jacob Hadrava stepped in with a unique vision to breathe some life into the decaying church. Instead of the usual restoration, he populated the place, all the empty pews, with ghostly sculptures crafted from plaster. And these eerie figures now sit in this sacred place, frozen in a congregation that blurs the line between art and the supernatural. Stories of a haunting atmosphere within this church still persist today. Some claim to sense an otherworldly presence as they explore the dimly lit space with whispers of ghostly apparitions and unexplained sounds. With all that said, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.